This program may contain strong language and sensitive content. Also, if I mention any film, I'm probably going to spoil it. Discretion is advised. You know those times when you randomly wake up at night and can't go back to sleep? There's nothing more annoying than being interrupted from your slumber. Anyways, you might as well get up and use this time to go to the toilet, even though you had convinced yourself that you don't need to pee because your bed was so nice and comfy when you first tucked yourself in. And as you walk through the darkness with the moonlight guiding your path, everything feels weird. It's almost like nighttime throws us into a different dimension like the twilight zone. You also might as well use this time to go get a sip of water as you let your mind wander off, planning out how the rest of the week will pan out. You tiptoe back through the darkness. There's a feeling of uncertainty, but at the same time, you're wrapped in the warmth and it feels like you're flying through time as you head back to bed, hoping to pick up from where you left off with your dreams. You get back, but you see your very own body lying in bed and the confusion sets in. Your heart beats louder and faster. A million thoughts rush in. Suddenly you can't breathe. In a split second, the room starts spinning and before you can even process what's going on, you wake up. You know those times when you randomly wake up at night and can't go back to sleep? There's nothing more annoying than being interrupted from your slumber. It's almost like nighttime throws us into a different dimension, like the Twilight Zone. Welcome to The Altar Take. We're digging into more sleep mysteries on this episode, diving into the world of lucid dreaming and astral travel. Away from our physical world are other planes of existence, realms beyond the 3D with infinite possibilities that our physical senses can't fathom. There's a magical bridge that allows us to escape from reality. A bridge that can sometimes allow our consciousness to float away and freely explore a different world. Dreaming. Sometimes weird, other times captivating. Our dreams let us feel sensations and see visuals beyond what our waking minds can picture. Almost like exploring an alternate dimension, dreams let us walk across the tightrope, landing gently in the spiritual lands. We are more than our physical bodies. From ancient times to now, the practice of exploring the dream world has long been used as a tool to uncover the bounds of reality, opening up doors to a myriad of untouched heights, crossing over the borders that house our reality. It happens naturally to the most of us, and more than likely, most of the experiences remain erased as they are forgotten soon after waking up. Some would use it just for fun, while some used it to gain insight, at times even interacting with deities and other beings that could only be accessed while dreaming. Others mastered the ability to consciously live their bodies, drifting gracefully away into the unseen, plummeting into the celestial abyss. We live in a shared hologram, a divine universal space that's open for us to travel to if we're willing to fearlessly jump into the world where space and time don't exist. We are more than our physical bodies. Dreams are a series of thoughts, feelings and images occurring while we sleep. As we talked about in the previous episode, most dreaming occurs in the REM phase of sleep, and researchers suggest that our eyes move during this phase as we are gazing at the images that our brains create. We actually dream every night but forget most of our dreams when we wake up because the hippocampus, which is the part of the brain responsible for learning and memory processes, is not fully active when we wake up. Most people dream from a first-person perspective, with the visuals being bizarre and weird as the brain replays or imagines up images from everything we've experienced while awake. The question of why we dream remains vague, but various sleep studies present some reasons as to why we dream. One reason for dreaming is to help us fulfill our subconscious wishes. 
Psychologist Sigmund Freud suggested that all of our dreams are a collection of images from our daily conscious life, which have symbolic meaning relating to the fulfillment of our subconscious wishes. Freud states that everything that we remember from our dreams is a symbolic representation of our subconscious primitive desires, and he believed that if we analyzed our dreams, we could unlock the content of the unconscious mind. Dreams also help us to enhance our memory. A 2010 study found that subjects who napped and dreamed of getting through a maze were better at solving it in real life compared to those who only thought about the maze or napped but did not dream about the maze. The researchers theorized that certain memory processes can only take place while we are asleep and these processes are indicated by our dreams. Our dreams also help us forget. There are thousands of neural connections in our brains created by everything we think and do. A 1983 neurobiology theory of dreaming called reverse learning holds that while going through the REM cycle of sleep, the neocortex reviews the neural connections and dumps the unnecessary ones. This unlearning process results in dreams, which if otherwise didn't happen, would cause the brain to be overloaded with a lot of unnecessary information that would interfere with our regular thinking. Dreaming helps to keep our brains working. The continual activation theory suggests that dreams are as a result of the brain wanting to create long-term memories or proper functioning. While we're asleep, the brain triggers data to be generated from the memory storage, which presents itself as the thoughts and feelings we experience in our dreams. This helps the brain to remain active while we're sleeping instead of fully shutting down. Our dreams also help us to rehearse. Primitive instinct rehearsal theory states that the content of dreams is significant to its purpose. Dreaming about different scenarios helps us to polish our instincts. For example, dreaming about a dangerous situation would help you practice your freeze or flight response, preparing you in case the event happens in real life. Our dreams help us heal. During the REM stage, stress neurotransmitters are less active. Researchers suggest that dreaming allows us to ease off from the painful experiences, giving room for psychological healing. When we review traumatic events as we dream, there is less mental stress, which helps give us a clear perspective and better capability to psychologically process them. Some scientists believe that the lack of dreaming caused by issues with sleep in those with certain mood disorders and PTSD could be a contributing factor to their illnesses. Lastly, Dreaming helps us to solve problems. In the dream world, the mind creates infinite outcomes that help us understand problems better and form solutions we might have not thought of while awake. Research has shown the effectiveness of dreams in problem solving, and this is evident as mentioned in the previous episode where the likes of Salvador Dali and Thomas Edison implemented sleep states to create room for creativity and insight. There's different factors that can affect the type of dreams that we have. When someone is sleep deprived, there's certain parts of the brain that remain active during REM sleep, which results in more vivid dreams. On the contrary, getting a good night's rest will result in less intense vivid dreams. When we're less stressed out during the day, we're also less likely to experience nightmares or intense dreams when we're sleeping. Due to the increased hormone production, pregnancy can also be a catalyst for vivid dreams as the hormones affect how the brain processes thoughts and emotions. Since what affects us while we're awake can affect us while we're sleeping, the type of food consumed can affect the type of dream that you experience. High carb food gives energy but can leave you feeling low which can result in disturbing dreams. Spicy foods have also been linked to causing nightmares when taken prior to going to bed. Certain mental health disorders, along with medications like antidepressants and antipsychotics, can also trigger intense dreams and at times, nightmares. When meditation is practiced frequently, many find that they tend to experience more vivid dreams and even lucid dreams at times, as meditation makes us more aware and mindful, which in turn makes us more aware of our surrounding while we are dreaming. Neville Goddard's method of imagining a scene or repeating a phrase that implies a desire is fulfilled while in the state akin to sleep pushes the idea that we are likely to dream about the last thing we think about or the last activity we do right before bed. 
our minds tend to replay the last things we watched or listened to as the information easily slips into the subconscious mind and is replayed through our dreams. In fact, this is one of the common methods used to induce lucid dreams as we'll see later on. From vivid dreams, false awakenings, to lucid dreams, let's take a look at some of the type of dreams commonly experienced. Dreams where we're in a dangerous situation like being chased or falling from a great height are very common. Notice how we tend to wake up right before we hit the ground or before anything bad happens. As we saw in the sleep paralysis episode, Hypnic jerks happen because the brain perceives the danger in our dreams as real and has no concept of what happens after death, so we are jolted awake right before anything bad could happen. Some theories even say that if you die in your dreams, you die in real life. Vivid dreams are intense clear dreams that almost feel real and we tend to remember after waking up. Aside from sleep deprivation, pregnancy and mental illness, there are several other factors that can increase the chances of experiencing vivid dreams. Medications like beta blockers and drugs like alcohol and psychedelics can make one experience vivid dreams. Disorders like narcolepsy, insomnia and schizophrenia can also increase the chances of having vivid dreams. If your sleep is disrupted and you wake up during the REM cycle, you're also more likely to remember your dreams vividly. Though vivid dreams feel real, are colorful, and have tons of sensory information, they differ from lucid dreams, as in vivid dreams we're only conscious of the details of the dreams, while in lucid dreams we're fully aware that we're dreaming. False awakenings are another common type of dream. A false awakening is a vivid and convincing dream where the dreamer believes that they're awake but in reality they're still asleep and dreaming. They happen during the REM cycle in the gap between wakefulness and sleep. If you become aware that you're dreaming during a false awakening, it can easily turn into a lucid dream. Research even shows that most lucid dreams tend to end in a false awakening. In her book, Lucid Dreaming, The Paradox of Consciousness During Sleep, Dr. Celia Green states that there are two types of false awakenings. In the first type, after waking up from the dream, you proceed to do the things that you usually would do. And in the second type, you wake up with the sense of something being off or the sense that something bad is going to happen. There's not much research on why false awakenings happen, but disturbance of REM sleep is said to be one of the contributing factors. You're also more likely to experience false awakenings if you've experienced other REM-related phenomena, like sleep paralysis. The excitement and anxiety of knowing that you need to wake up early or being stressed out about something that's gonna happen when you wake up can also cause you to dream and think that you've actually woken up. The proto-consciousness theory states that the brain prepares for consciousness during REM sleep using its internal representation of our everyday world. False awakenings could happen when hyperarousal or increased alertness during REM sleep keep you from experiencing regular dreams. For instance, in a dream with something surreal happening, the dream would rely on specific memories of the familiar surrounding and from your daily routine, thus inducing a false awakening. Lucid dreams are when you're aware or conscious while you're dreaming. They're usually vivid and feel real, but can sometimes be vague. The earliest written record of lucid dreaming was by Aristotle in his book On Dreams, where he described reaching a state of awareness while dreaming. Eastern religious traditions like Buddhism and Vedic practices have also talked about the role that being aware while in a dream state plays. Lucid dreaming was long observed for years, but it wasn't until the 19th century when scientists formally started researching it. Research from the 60s and 70s discovered that lucid dreams were associated with REM sleep and the creation of the electro-oculogram allowed the detection of eye movements which signaled the awareness of dream states. Other technological advancements like the electroencephalogram allowed researchers to observe closely what happens to the brain during sleep and how it contributes to lucid dreaming. Metacognition involves the awareness and understanding of your own thought processes, and lucid dreaming, along with metacognitive functions, share similar neural systems, meaning that those with the higher ability to monitor their own thoughts, for example through meditation, have a higher chance of experiencing lucid dreams.
Aside from aiding in research on discovering the therapeutic benefits of lucid dreaming, in addition to how it can be useful in treating conditions like PTSD and anxiety, psychophysiologist Dr. Stephen LeBurge invented one of the first techniques to induce lucid dreams in the 1980s. The technique is called MILD, which stands for Mnemonic Induction of Lucid Dreaming in Four, and it relies on prospective memory, a form of memory that involves remembering to perform a planned action in the future. In this technique, you repeatedly tell yourself before you go to sleep that you will dream and you will be aware that you're dreaming. This being your last thought will increase the chances of you becoming aware while you dream. Another commonly used method is a WILD technique, which stands for wake-induced lucid dreaming and involves remaining conscious while crossing over from wakefulness into the dream state. It stems from Tibetan dream yoga, and it teaches that while laying down, fully relax your body till you get to the hypnagogic state, which is usually observed from the visuals and patterns seen behind your eyelids. This triggers phosphorescence, which is the phenomenon of seeing light without light entering your eyes. The hypnagogic state may also simulate sounds and sensations like floating or rocking side to side, signaling that the mind is asleep at this point. While still maintaining awareness, continue observing the hypnagogia till you feel the dream state coming. After this, you can create a dream scene and then proceed to launch your lucid dream. Keeping a dream journal is another method encouraged to help induce lucid dreams. Many have found that taking note of your dreams helps you become more aware of your dreams while they're happening in your sleep. Another common technique is practicing reality testing. This involves doing checks while you're awake to confirm if you're dreaming and can be done through different ways, like checking your reflection in the mirror. If it's distorted, you know you're dreaming. You can also touch solid objects and if your hand goes through, you're definitely dreaming, but if it doesn't, you're awake. You can also count the fingers on your hands to check if you're dreaming or awake, as in dreams we tend to have extra fingers. Checking clocks is also a good reality check, as time changes fast in our dreams but remains constant when we are awake. If you pinch your nose and you find you're still breathing, this is a clear indicator that you're dreaming and not awake. These checks are done multiple times throughout the day and increase your metacognition, which trains your mind to do reality checks while you're dreaming, thus increasing the chances of lucid dreams as you're more aware. Overall, ensuring that you get more REM sleep through regular quality sleep patterns is the biggest factor that can help to induce lucid dreams. Aside from this, Lucid dreaming is also commonly used to enhance creativity as there are endless possibilities that can be explored while dreaming. Research even shows that people who lucid dream have a higher measure of creativity with most reporting feeling inspired just by the experience itself. Likewise, lucid dreaming comes with its own pitfalls. Sleep interruption from the different techniques used to induce lucid dreaming can cause sleep problems in the long run and affect the overall well-being and mental state of an individual. Disturbance of sleep patterns can also lead to derealization, which makes a person feel like the things and people around them are not real. Sleep paralysis can also be encountered as a phenomena also happens during this state where you remain conscious but your body is asleep. Lucid dreaming allows us to control our dreams and experience a range of different desired events, but there's a practice that allows us to fully separate from our bodies, exploring the corners of the dream world and beyond through astral travel. Astral projection is an intentional out-of-body experience or near-death experience where the soul or astral body detaches from the physical body while sleeping, allowing consciousness to travel to the astral plane. Astral projection differs from out-of-body experiences as out-of-body experiences are usually unplanned and your consciousness doesn't travel but rather just hovers over your body while astral projection is planned and considered a spiritual practice. From ancient Egypt to Hinduism, astral projection has been talked about for years and though there is no scientific evidence for it, those who have experienced the esoteric practice report it to be very real. 
It's also similar to lucid dreaming, but lucid dreaming is more of an inward experience while astral projection is an outward experience with your consciousness literally living your body. There's different ways to achieve astral projection. In one of the common methods, it is recommended to lay on your back and relax when you go to sleep or nap, and this can be done at night or daytime. You can listen to frequencies like binaural beats that will help induce a sleepy state while keeping your mind alert. Take deep breaths in and out to relax every part of your body and in your mind, remain aware of the room around you using your imagination to focus on a specific spot. After some time, your body will feel numb and a rocking sensation can be felt. You can also induce this sensation by tensing up your muscles, holding still and imagining your body swaying from side to side. Eventually, you'll feel tingles all over your body. This is a vibrational stage and once you get here, you're almost about to leave your body. Your heart may then begin to beat faster. This happens because this is a near-death experience and your body has never experienced death before, so it pounds faster and faster in response to the fear of this new experience. It's common to hear random sounds simulated by the hypnagogic state or sometimes even sleep paralysis, but it's important to stay calm as fear only feeds into your imagination. These sensations happen right before your astral body finally leaves your physical body and for some, it happens naturally without them realizing till they look back and see their body still asleep in bed. If you don't naturally live your body, a common technique is to imagine a silver string or cord running from the ceiling down to your pineal gland which is right between your eyes or to your heart center, then reach out your astral hands and pull yourself out. In the vibrational stage, you can also try to sit up while keeping your physical body asleep. Once your astral body lives your physical body, you have successfully astral projected and can now explore the world around you. It can be a frightening experience seeing your own body from a third person perspective and most people usually wake up right away from the shock. But once you've mastered remaining calm after you've projected, you can proceed to explore the world around you and even fly into the astral plane. The astral plane is a multi-dimensional plane with multiple realms and layers. Each layer has its own energy and inhabitants, with vibrations increasing as you travel to higher realms. The first layer is closest to Earth and has the lowest vibration. This is where most people go when they first start practicing astral projection and they might meet other travelers or even other beings who at this level can be low vibrational. In the face of whatever may be encountered, remain calm and realize that we fear what we don't understand and the more you open your mind up to the experience, the more courage you will build. The astral plane lies in the 5D where the distance between objects doesn't exist. This means that a simple intentional thought or feeling can instantly send you to a desired location or even attract higher vibrational beings. Many claim that these high vibrational beings offer them guidance and assistance as they travel the astral planes, but caution still needs to be taken when interacting with non-human entities. To return back to the 3D and end your travel, just imagine your physical body and soon enough you will effortlessly wake up as usual. Lucid dreaming and astral projection have been presented many times through film. The drama series Falling Water follows a group of individuals who realize they share a common dream. By inducing lucid dreaming, they each navigate their own personal quests but soon realize that the dream world that they explore and the visions that they encounter in their common dream hold a deeper meaning that's possibly connected to the fate of the real world. 2004 sci-fi romance film Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind explores consciousness and memories following Joel, who after finding out that his girlfriend Clementine underwent a procedure to erase memories of them, decides to undergo the same treatment. Joel, however, changes his mind midway, making him have to fight against the eraser as he struggles to cling on to every last memory of the relationship that's left. This sends him into a lucid state where he relives his unconscious memories, fighting to save anything that he can as he tries to wake up in real life, hoping to stop the procedure. 
Christian Nolan's critically acclaimed film Inception follows thief Dom Cobb, who steals valuable corporate secrets using dream-sharing technology and the vulnerable dream state. Cobb is given the task of planting an idea in the mind of a CEO, but the mysteries of the dream world challenge him and his team as he's an enemy that predicts their every move, hindering their goal. In the popular Netflix series Behind Her Eyes, we see astral projection being used as a tool by the characters to spy on others. Adele, who suspects her husband's infidelity, has mastered the art of lucid dreaming and astral projection and uses them to travel to different places and even take over other people's bodies. And of course, one of the popular representations of astral projection comes from Doctor Strange. Neurosurgeon Stephen Strange travels to Nepal in a desperate bout to heal his failing hands, but instead he meets a sorceress who trains him in the mystical arts. He masters astral projection and travels the world and across the multiverses, finding himself in the front line of a battle against unseen dark forces hell-bent on destroying reality. From out-of-body experiences to lucid dreaming, the practice of attaining altered states of consciousness and exploring the dream world shows up severally in films and in our real lives. The CIA has not been left behind in this practice as, after all, playing with consciousness could change reality and sometimes even pose a big threat. Let's take a look at the CIA and some of the findings they have on this altered states. In 1983, Lieutenant Colonel Wayne McDonald submitted a 30-page report titled Analysis and Assessment of the Gateway Process. The report outlined a step-by-step -step guide on how to achieve out-of-body experiences for the purpose of intelligence gathering. McDonald found that consciousness cannot only be projected to a different state, but also be pulled out of this reality and travel anywhere in the universe at any point in time. The document states that the universe does not exist, but is a mere construct created by our minds. The gateway process allows us to experience reality beyond what we think it is. The document was initially classified because anyone could do it, but it was later on declassified in 2003. There are alternate states of reality that exist outside of our physical world and time, and the gateway process can be used to access these other dimensions. MacDonald also had to strongly support his findings with science, as a lot of it could be written off as spiritual woo-woo that isn't real. Radio broadcast executive Robert Monroe led research into altered states of consciousness and in the 1970s, he founded the Monroe Institute after he accidentally made a discovery while experimenting with different sounds. One day, while listening to a specific frequency, Monroe felt his body become paralyzed, which was followed by a vibration sensation, flashing lights, and a loud sound. After this, he had an out-of-body experience, which at the time had no scientific research to explain it. He was able to replicate this experience again by listening to the same sound. While out of his body, Monroe discovered that he could access and sustain different states of consciousness by synchronizing both hemispheres of the brain. The Gateway Process is a training process developed by the Monroe Institute. MacDonald, along with other personnel, undertook the training and he recorded his findings in this report that's now available to the public through the CIA. Though anyone can do it, there's a process that needs to be followed. MacDonald encouraged that one should master meditation and focus in addition to setting doubt aside to allow your mind to open up to the experience. Everything around us is created by the mind. All that exists, from our bodies to the universe, is a complex system of energy fields. Human consciousness is a function of the interaction of energy and our brains are designed to filter everything out except from the energy that creates our reality. The brain converts universal energy to matter that we can perceive with our senses. Our senses are what create the illusion of solid matter so that we can get to experience reality in a way that we can comprehend. Physicist David Bohm and Professor Carl Prebrom found that just like the universe, the human mind is also a hologram that attunes itself to the universal hologram to achieve the state we call consciousness. 
Through the gateway process, we can escape space and time and experience altered states of reality. The gateway process uses hemisync technology which syncs both hemispheres of the brain. The left hemisphere is more active in beta waves and is concerned with alertness and attention, while the right hemisphere operates slower and is more active in alpha waves and concerned with creativity and relaxation. The holographic theory helps us understand consciousness beyond the 3D and it states that energy creates, stores and retrieves meaning in the universe by projecting or expanding at certain frequencies in a 3D mode that creates a pattern called a hologram. The study found that holograms encode a significant amount of details that when observed can manifest physically. MacDonald wrote that we can alter reality through a process called patterning. If we project our thoughts with intensity, they have the power to influence reality since consciousness is the only reality. He added that consciousness can enter the space beyond human perception, eventually clicking out of reality. So the gateway program employs two techniques. The first is frequency following response, which involves introducing a frequency through headphones, which the brain then tries to imitate. The second technique is beat frequency or binaural beats, where a different frequency is played through each ear and the brain then hears the difference between these two frequencies, creating a vibrato wave-like sound. Once you click out of reality, you can explore the absolute. The absolute is an energy field at rest with our reality lying on top of it. It is the source of where we come from and where we go back to after dying in our physical reality. The universe is created by our collective consciousness while we each maintain our own individual identities. McDonald stated that regardless of personal belief, the gateway process can help us understand our consciousness and the universal hologram, perhaps even answering the big question of the origins of our universe and the absolute as a whole. He concluded his report by advising military personnel to listen to the gateway tapes and learn how to achieve the altered states at will. He encouraged them to learn how to have out-of-body experiences and use it for remote viewing, a practice where a person gathers information on a distant unseen object by using their mind to sense it. Lastly, Lieutenant McDonald stated that the military should use patterning with the ultimate goal of adjusting reality for use in practical application. Though there is a risk of psychosis or even possibly completely detaching from reality, many have found that the Gateway program helped them gain more self-awareness, clarity and creativity. That's a lot of information to take in, but the documents along with the Gateway tapes are available online for anyone to access. Turns out there's more to sleep than just closing your eyes and resting. From nightmares, sleep paralysis, lucid dreaming to astral projection, sleep and the dream world hosts a whole other world of untouched experiences and possibilities beyond our logical comprehension. Dreams could be the door that leads us to the answer of our existence in the multiverses at large, creating even more questions as to just how real our 3D world is or if our true reality lies in higher dimensions. So, are all these experiences just mere projections of our brains, or are we actually more than our physical bodies? That does it for this episode. Tune in for the next one as we explore the mysteries of water from mermaids, La Llorona to Atlantis. Bye, honey. So, there's a myth that you shouldn't sleep with a mirror facing your bed as mirrors are realms to other dimensions and could draw in dark entities. I don't know how true that is but I've definitely slept with a mirror facing my bed. And I'm still good! Some dream interpreters warn against eating food in your dreams as an entity could be trying to poison you so you remain trapped in the dream world. Also don't know how true that is but if there's food in my dream, I'm going to eat. <laughs>